We're ready? All right, welcome everyone to the City Council meeting for Monday, May 13th. Uh, if we could have a roll call, please, ma'am, to establish quorum. Vicki Schneider? Here. Bob Thomas? Here. Susan Harmon? Here. Harry Meyer? Here. Melissa uh, Green and Terry are absent with notice. All right, we may stand and pledge allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Can I get a motion for the approval of the agenda? Make a motion to approve the agenda. Second. second. Motion second. Um, Item number three, under new business, the ordinance for aggregate and sidewalks uh, will need to be deferred. Mr. Weaver still working on that. Any other changes? <coughs> yes, Susan. Can we, um, I know Melissa's not here either, so um, I know she's on a couple of these. And let me just see which one it is. Um, looks like the master plan. And then... Uh, discussion of previously proposed animal law changes. Can we defer both of those? Um, Mr. Thomas? Uh, Melissa only seconded the master plan, so she really wasn't involved, and I'm prepared to discuss it tonight. And she only seconded my thing. I think we just might need to clarify something with the city attorney. I think that's all we were doing. Okay, so y'all feel like keeping it on the agenda? Okay. I don't care. It's up to you guys. Uh, any other? All right. Um, otherwise, hearing nothing, motion. Uh, give tip. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'm sorry. The, um, where'd it go? The Norris property? Uh huh. Did you have anything on that? Because that I, was I don't have, I've got a little update. I don't have the formal okay. anything written. Well, you've got the update. Okay. Well, I'll talk about it. Okay. Well, because Terry wasn't here, and I didn't know if you wanted to wait or not. Well, we'll, we'll be deferred anyway. So. It'll be in the minutes. All right. Okay. Uh, all those in favor of the agenda as amended, sing for by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Get a motion to approve the minutes. Uh, yeah. Motion to approve the minutes. Okay. Second. Oh. <laughs> all right. Any corrections, additions? Hearing none, all those in favor, the minutes as submitted, sing five by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Uh, we still have a vacancy in the Planning Commission and also the CAPC. And I think um, Mr. Huss is here to give us a little presentation on the parks. Uh, update. And evening, everyone. Uh, as promised, here for our quarterly report. Um, we've had a pretty eventful first quarter for parks. Uh, started our year off with storm damage out at the lake and replacing our marina, uh, insurance claim for that, and a number of our boats. Uh, we've replaced flooring in all of our cabins. Uh, my stands one uh, out there at Lake Leatherwood and some campsites. Uh, we've done some tree trimming, uh, both in town and at Leatherwood, for hazard tree limbs and things of that around the campsites. Uh, we removed a tree in Basin Park. Uh, we've been working down in Harmon on the same types of things. Uh, we've tur finished our turn around at the top of our downhill trails for the shuttle to drop off so we're no longer any crossing the highway or utilizing the hotel parking lot uh, back onto our own property up there and it's functioned very well. Uh, we spent a lot of time this uh, winter on our springs adding some new beds utilizing the city's uh, compost which is wonderful uh, to put some of those in. Uh, also had a tremendous amount of work we've done in our office, uh, replacing the floor ultimately, uh, which has turned to replacing the electric, which has turned to patching more electric, which is now painting that wall. And you, you guys know how that goes around here when you start doing that. Uh, uh, Vince Peshkar, our, our maintenance uh, lead, is, is amazing. In, in, in my office, we had an inch and seven eighths drop from one corner to the other, so uh, we don't roll away in meetings anymore now when we go in there. So that'll be nice. Um, <coughs> Uh, we've had some vehicle challenges at least recently. We've lost our flatbed and replaced it. 
uh, and looking with the additional staff, trying to add a, another vehicle uh, or two if possible, uh, try to minimize our mileage expenditures. Uh, we've had we've added some staff. We've had some staff turnover. Uh, we lost our groundskeeper Shane and Lively earlier this year to uh, a tremendous opportunity he had to follow. Uh, in general, seasonal turnover as we all experience around town. Uh, getting ready to staff back up again on that. <coughs> and of course, we've had uh, the loss of uh, Terry Liker recently, our city gardener, uh, still resonating throughout our uh, staff and. Uh, working on all that and having uh, uh, really just want to thank the citizens who've come out and volunteered. We have a lot of groups that are uh, reaching out to us on how do we help with the springs and what do we do and uh, ways to honor Terry and help out and keep those going. So we do want to thank uh, all the public do that has helped so far and there's some more opportunities and some local groups talking about adopting some of the springs. So we're uh, taking those silver lining as that maybe we, we can engage uh, some of the people that are around the springs and use the springs to participate in them. Uh, as everybody else has, it's been a, the first quarter's been fairly rough for weather on the weekends. Uh, it seemed like every weekend it rained, or it rained right before, which would kind of shut down our trails. Um, so it's kept our revenue high expectations down, although we're still around our projections. Um, and that combined with our uh, spending not a freeze, but being very carefully spending this year, we're sitting about $3,000 to the good for the first quarter. Uh, one thing that has been uh, tremendously successful for us is the shuttle uh, for the downhill trails out of Lake Leatherwood. Uh, so far in this lackluster first quarter, if you will, we've already hit 46% of what our projections are for 2019 for the shuttle revenue. Uh, so we're, we have some pretty high expectations for that uh, as we run through the summer, uh, just with the numbers we're seeing and the locations we're seeing. Uh, this weekend will be the Continental Enduro, the uh, Enduro World Series qual Continental Qualifier. qualifier. <laughs> it's a mouthful there. Uh, this is one of three races in the continental United States. It's a qualifier for the World Enduro Racing Series. Uh, this was a, uh, I don't know what the f amount was to host this, uh, but Oz Trails and the Walton Foundation paid, I believe, $8,000 to apply to host it uh, to give you an idea of the, the backing that they've, they've put behind this. This is a pretty big deal. Um, and this will be, uh, again, utilizing the trails at Leatherwood, Passion play in, in town again on Sunday morning uh, with our uh, urban uh, downhill, which is uh, really popular and get to come down some staircases and all that. So uh, a lot of that stuff coming out this week as a few things have been firmed up on uh, their end for advertising. Uh, generally, uh, we have high expectations for the year. Uh, the CAPC has put some advertising out in the Bike Arkansas magazine, for instance. Uh, some billboards over in the corridor uh, and just continued organic uh, uh, spread of videos and people out visiting the park. We're, we're really expecting a, 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 to see a major impact this year across the town and not just in parks. We think everybody's going to see that uh, and we're excited about that because we, we feel like we're uh, providing some infrastructure and developments that are, that are benefiting the town and that's what we're supposed to do. Uh, so we feel like we're competing that mission and being fiscally responsible and uh, having some uh, uh, dramatic yet uh, uh, reasonable growth. So that's what I have. So I'm happy to take any questions. Anybody have anything? Yes, ma'am. I just have a question, just because I'm not out there on a regular basis, but um, I know you've got the shuttle income, correct? Okay. How else do you make money on the trails? It's really ancillary stuff. I mean, it's camp. Some of them camp. You know, we do get some of those, and, and we're trying to track those within our system to find the, the, the same uh, uh, guests on there. Um, you know, other than that, we're looking at other ways to capture some of that. Uh, vending machines for after hours, uh, tires, <laughs> tubes. Uh, the the trails out there shred tires. So, uh, uh, but that, that's our, our direct revenue. So the, the majority of it is coming from the shuttle? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And, and it's been, we had one, uh, I believe it was Easter, the Saturday of Easter weekend, we did $1,000 on Saturday. 20 bucks a head. Okay. So, um, it's doing pretty good. Is that 20 bucks a holiday ticket? 
and it's kind of like a, it's, you just kind of think of like a lift ticket. Huh. Same yeah. same ride. The whole thing's kind of a concept of like ski yeah. slope. So yeah, uh, and and generally the people, the folks that are riding in Colorado and places like that and coming out just just think it's a heck of a deal. Mm -hmm. You know, sure. they think we're charging. We aren't charging enough. So we might look at that later. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else? Justin, thanks. You might want to stick around yeah. for the uh, the other item there too. Comes up. All right. Um, that brings us to uh, public comments. Uh, good evening. My name is David Mary. I live at 52 Wall Street. At the present, we are developing a small division, subdivision up on East Mountain Street, and I'd like to propose to the City Council that they accept the, the street as a, part, as a city street. And we were, it, it presently is, it is deeded to us, and we would like to deed it to the city. And then uh, it has been pre-approved by the Department, uh, the Fire Department, because it's proper grading and the proper uh, width for their big fire trucks. There's a fire hydrant we have put in there. We have put in all new sewer lines, all new water lines approved by the state. Uh, and by the, the meters are read by the city. So the, city, the, the street is presently being used as a city street, basically. They come in there and they pick up the trash. They pick up the recycling. There's mail delivery. There's a new buried electric and gas all through the subdivision. We have three houses completed and sold. So they are paying taxes to the city now. There is three more that we're building probably in the next year and a half. So we're going to have we have a total of 16 that we're building in there. So it's going to be a good piece of the city. They're very very nice homes. We have. Uh, has Central Park in the center of the road that we are using for collecting the rainwater because we're the highest point around and we're worried about rainwater coming down and going through people's yards. So we're using the park to absorb the rain and hold it on the property. It is already basically being used as a city street. So I would just like to, you guys to accept it as part of the city. And then it's, uh, uh, we were told basically that it's not up to city standards, but so are half the streets in this city are not up to city standards. And this is just, you know, we don't want to pave the roads because we're using the roads for absorbing the rain too. So it's part of our, our initial plan. As we've put in rain gardens on all the houses to hold the water in too. So basically it's going to be a very nice little subdivision up there. And it's going to be a good contribution to the city. Where the people we're getting in are seem to be retire, retiring people that want to come here. They don't want to be living in the older homes because it's just too hard to take, maintain them and renovate them. So I think we're going to be a good chunk for the city. And we're going to be good for the city. And I'd like you guys to have it deeded to you. What was the name of the street again? Corley Street. How do you spell it? C-O-R-L-E-Y. C -O -R -L -E -Y. It was originally deeded, platted as part of the city back in the 1800s, and then it was vacated and given to the property owners that we bought it from. So then we... We want to give it back to the city, basically. I, well, that's all I got to say. Any questions? We're not allowed to. <laughs> all right, thanks, sir. Okay, thank you. All right, that uh, concludes the public comments. Uh, next item will be the unfinished business is Ordinance 2278, uh, prohibiting animal suffering on second reading. Mr. Thomas? I move to suspend the rules and read Ordinance 2278 by title only for the second reading. Second. Okay, good motion. Second. Discussion? All right, hearing none. Ms. Schneider? Yes. Mr. Meyer? Yes. Ms. Harmon? Yes. Mr. Thomas? Yes. Or zero? Ordinance number 2278, an ordinance amending the Eureka Springs Municipal Code to prohibit animal suffering. Mr. Thomas? I move to pass Ordinance 2278 on its second reading. Second. Okay. Any discussion? No discussion. Uh, all those in favor, sing for saying aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, so moved. But that uh, be our next item will be uh, Mr. Weaver's opinion on discuss the uh, decision on reducing fees at Echo Village. Get a motion to discuss. Motion to discuss. Second. Mr. Weaver.
as I understand the question, and, uh, and if I'm wrong, I would like to be corrected, but uh, there was a move and council action to reduce some fees. Uh, as long as those fees were not designated as TAP fees, I think the city is within its ability to reduce fees. Uh, state law, I think, prohibits the reduction of TAP fees into the uh, water <coughs> sewer. So, as far as other fees that are controlled by the city, um, if the council in this instance or in any other instance wishes to lower a fee or waive a fee, it appears to have the ability to do so. But uh, if it comes to a tap fee, we do not have that ability based on case law out of the state court system. Any questions? So we can if we want to according to our law? State law supersedes whatever we do in that area. So um, if we did it on ours, then the state could say no? The state could actually impose sanctions against the city. <laughs> so knows we shouldn't do this? Not, not if it's a tap fee. Tap fee. Okay. What about the rest of it? What? The other fees are collected and, and spent. Uh, by the city's will, by the council's direction. So we can do with anything else, just not the tap fee? Uh, I won't say anything else, but as far as building fees and, and construction fees. Oh, that's what I mean. Yes. That's what I'm referring to. Okay. Any other questions? Comments? All right. Ready to move on to our next item? Uh, this is a new business ordinance for fireworks. Uh, you have in your packet uh, an ordinance, uh, proposed ordinance, uh, allowing us to shoot off the fireworks inside the city limits. We get a motion to discuss. Motion to discuss. Second. Second. Um, I'm going to let our parks director <laughs> lead off on this. This is really kind of exciting for us. Uh, <coughs> Hello again. Um, I, I agree with the mayor. I think it is a pretty exciting prospect, and, and what we're looking at doing, and the ordinance required to be able to do this, is the uh, uh, parcel in town here between Magnetic and Mill Hollow, known as Marble Flats, was purchased by the NWA Trailblazers uh, for trail development and, and the process through this. Um, seeing as it's one of the highest points in town and is rock all on the top. Uh, and the challenges we had in our last 4th of July, we thought that that would be an interesting spot to shoot off fireworks uh, for the town. Um, and what that would do would allow basically anyone who has a deck facing either direction uh, through town, be it restaurants, private residences, you know, uh, bars, uh, but everyone would have a chance to see this and, and, uh, and, and we just think it would be a pretty neat uh, way to do this. And we'd be doing it the 6th, which is actually after the 4th. Um, it's much cheaper with that, and there's a finite number of uh, licensed shooters in Arkansas. Um, That's a Saturday? It's a Saturday, yeah. following the fourth, yeah, the fourth is Thursday. So, uh, uh, with that, we've, uh, but we've taken fire chief and fire marshal have visited the site with us, um, and, and given their blessing, uh, you know, obviously barring any sort of dryness, as we all stood there, we all agreed that none of us want to be that guy. Uh, that we're <laughs> trying to shoot off fireworks in the dry, dry season, obviously, but uh, uh, they felt good about it again with the, with the rock up there. Uh, and we think it'd be a, a neat thing that would be a draw. That's kind of a part where we start kind of declining. A lot of people start hitting the lake that weekend and after that, so maybe we draw little folks back in there. And, and plus, just a great spot. Everybody could even pause for 15 minutes and work in at the restaurants and get a chance to see fireworks. And uh, I think it'd make a heck of a picture of the down the Eureka Springs image with fireworks in the background. So that's what we propose. So you're planning it on Saturday, not Correct. on the 4th. Correct. Yeah, it's just prohibitively expensive. Our $8,000 show would be about 16 for the same deal. So, plus they have some stuff left over sometimes. We get a couple extra shows in a way. 
And have you taken into consideration the fallout? Okay, my husband yeah. used to help do it at right. Holiday Island. Yeah. They only got blown up once. <laughs> These guys are professionals. We're not gonna we're not gonna be out there playing yeah, around. They were experienced, yeah, not professionals. Not experience is one thing. Yeah. They knew how to run fast. <laughs> Mr. Thomas, uh, on the calendar, do we have to read this three times tonight, or can we read it two times tonight and one time at our I next think meeting? We have time to. We, we've decided we could read it twice and then hold off on one time. Okay. So yeah, we got and that's why we're bringing it up tonight, so we got time to do this. Yes, Miss Harmon. Um, since you're the one that brought this, um, can you, I'm assuming the portion that was added or amended starts with where it says, um, goes through the first 72401, goes through the first part of that, and then it says, except when done by an employee of the city as part of their, part of their official duties in the remainder of that sentence. Is that what you added to this particular? The portion you just read plus the remainder of that sentence. That's what I'm saying. From yes. here to the, the the very end of that paragraph, yes. that was all added. That is all added. Okay. All right. That's all what I need to know. Yep. Thank you. Anybody else, Mr. Thomas? Oh. Not for discussion. Mr. Snyder. Um, just one request that, if we pass this, which I'm assuming we will, please, please, please make sure it is put out there to everyone. Unless you live in town with doggies, you have no idea. Oh, sure. And that's, that's one of the things we want to get out. Yeah. For the lots and about lots that. of advertising, <laughs> please. And we're going to uh, be reaching out with a drone uh, contractor to who's going to send a drone up to look at the elevation to shoot back at town to try and give everybody an idea. There's your window. You can see it. You know, there's your deck. You can see it. So we can give people some next year we'll all know yeah. where we can see it from and whose deck's the best. But yeah. um, this year we're going to have a little bit. We're going to try and get that out a little bit. It's pretty much almost a straight line from Christ of the Ozarks to the Crescent Ho uh, Hotel is, is where Marble Flats are. It's about halfway between there. So. Yeah, that'll be echoing really good in town and scaring all of our pets to death. I don't like cats screaming at me. <laughs> 15 minutes. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Thomas? I move to sign the fireworks ordinance, the number, and read it for the first time. Second. Okay, got a motion and a second to sign the number and read for the first time. So any other comments? All those in favor, say five by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. The ordinance number will be 2279, <clears throat> an ordinance amending Title VII of the Eureka Springs Municipal Code to clarify use of items containing powder or other combustible or explosive material or to employ or in any way utilize theatrical pyrotechnics. Whereas the City Council of the City of Eureka Springs desires to better codify its regulation of the use of commercial fireworks and or other items containing powder or other combustible or explosive material or to employ or in any way utilize theatrical pyrotechnics within the city. Now therefore be it ordained by the City Council of the City of Eureka Springs that Title VII of the Municipal Code be amended as follows. Section 1, subsection 7.24.01 shall be amended to read as follows. 7.24.01, firing. It shall be unlawful for any person to fire or discharge any firearm, pellet gun, BB gun, air rifle, or any toy cannon, or to set off any squibs, firecrackers, or other thing containing powder, or other combustible or explosive material, or to employ or in any way utilize theatrical pyrotechnics when within the corporate limits of the city, except when done by an employee of the city as part of their official duties, or when hired by the city or one of its departments to do so on behalf of the city or other governmental entity. Section 2. All provisions of the ordinances of the City of Eureka Springs in conflict with the provisions of this ordinance are hereby repealed and all other provisions of the ordinances of the City of Eureka Springs, not in conflict with the provisions of this ordinance, shall remain in full effect. Severability. Section 3. Severability. 
Should any sentence, paragraph, clause, phrase, or section of this ordinance be adjudged or held to be unconstitutional, illegal, or invalid, the same shall not affect the validity of this ordinance as a whole or any part or provision thereof other than the parts so decided to be invalid, illegal, or unconstitutional and shall not affect the validity of the Eureka Springs Municipal Code as a whole. Mr. Thomas? Yeah, I move to pass ordinance number 2279 on its first reading. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? <coughs> it's so moved. <coughs> I move to suspend the rules and read ordinance number 2279 by title only on its second reading. Second. Motion and a second to read by title only. Any discussion? Okay. Mr. Thomas? Yes. Ms. Schneider? Yes. Ms. Harmon? Yes. Mr. Meyer? Yes. Four zero. Ordinance number 2279, an ordinance amending Title Seven of the Eureka Springs Municipal Code to clarify use of items containing powder or other combustible or explosive materials or to employ or in any way utilize theatrical pyrotechnics. Mr. Thomas? Yeah, I move to pass Ordinance 2279 on its second reading. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That's so moved. All right, that brings us up to uh, discussion with Public Works. Uh, Mr. Allen on our street projects. Motion to discuss? Motion to discuss. Second. All right. Mr. Allen, you're up, sir. I think we all have your street plan and <laughs> oh, yes, that's good. Oh uh, yeah, on the streets uh you know plan twenty nineteen is and, and, and those totals are over budget than, than what we've got so that's what we're kind of asking we're looking at what we can do of course and, and we got to be a little flexible as we go each budget we go in but uh, you know each year revenue wise we're looking this year uh, we'd estimated six hundred fifty nine thousand three hundred dollars back <clears throat> state turn back of course the big one is uh, the sales tax is the main what we pull back of course you guys have got that information uh, it all tells you uh, up and then uh, of course uh, the governor's uh, the street plan that's that's you know the, the fund we've been utilizing like last year we utilized uh, hillside and grand for that overlay uh, we couldn't have done that with our budget so it's it's a turn back comes back from from uh, the cities now and it's uh, 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 act 416 they're, they're raising that this last session. Uh, first of October, uh, gas tax goes up three cents, and in the, in the diesel six in the state. Uh, so we're looking, you know, they're extra for the hybrids, electric vehicles. They're going to take 35 million from the casino revenue. But uh, so we're hoping we will receive some of that. The state's, uh, the city's 20 percent. Look like 13 more million dollars a year. So, uh, when this, if the the next election, if the pass and tail sales tax uh, passes, is made permanent, they're looking at maybe 144 million per year for the cities when that is all in place. So, you know, we 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 get in line. There's uh, over 500 incorporated cities, so it's you know we have to make a good case for that. Uh, we, that's 100% up to 250,000. We can do 450 of matching if a bigger project, but uh, uh, just a little bit of, of, of how we make that work. But uh, so as we come into this year, uh, we had budgeted 320,531. So the last several years, we budget just a little bit below. We've turned some funds back in. Uh, uh, and, and of course, we we've always got to keep a, uh, some extra funds in case of disasters. Uh, we're looking. We've had in the last decade, we've had eight presidential disasters, as you know, here and a handful of uh, 
of uh, state disasters. You're talking over a million dollars worth of damage, uh, the, and the, the state now it does not reimburse their uh, percentage of disasters. They they can't afford it. That's out. So, but but. Uh, Utilizing that, and with the FEMA funds that we've used, uh, put over the years, we've 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 got uh, nine hundred twenty-five thousand dollars in surplus at this point. Uh, so we're looking to maybe ask to use some of that for some overlay in the city this year. Of course, we don't want to we don't want to get close to you know in case we had another slide or ice storm or something. Uh, so that's kind of. That's kind of what we're talking about, and, and those funds, so the 620 we're putting in for this year, approximately a third of that salaries, wages, uh, a third of that's street lights, professional service, other things, a third of that then becomes street maintenance that we can look at, and that includes patching and whatever we have to do, snow plowing, and then on, whatever we can squeeze extra out of that, then we try to preserve some streets. So, as you can see, it makes it real difficult to, to maintain the streets so but that's kind of what we're looking at and, and the list you'll see this year we've this year you know last year we we had the, the the grant for the tunnel and we did hillside grant this year we're looking at more some drainage projects uh, to try to save some of the streets that we've been wanting to do for a few years and, and then and kind of with with parks Grand Street, that that project that's for drainage. Uh, but then it, you'll see there's several streets here. We're talking about overlay, and I'm kind of wanting to to utilize uh, with those those numbers, the estimates. Uh, that's not really a two-inch overlay. That's a we want to kind of uh, it's a modified aggregate quick set type of a deal, which we is a third of the price. And that's what we'd like to do, utilize that. Uh, so those numbers are kind of reflected of that. And if, if you started talking about the project we did last year on those, we they would be escalating. Because uh, we're talking uh, that job, the Hillside and Grand, you're talking 6,000 linear feet. That was $270,000 job. That was you're looking at basically four, forty-five dollars a linear foot. Uh, it was sixteen thousand ton on that job, so, and it's court asphalt. What it'll be this year? It's close to 150 a ton last year. Uh, we could we possibly we could do this uh, modified overlay for fifteen dollars a linear foot. So. Uh, I think it would be good, and we could maybe seal some stuff. That's what we're looking at, and uh, trying to uh, you know, hopefully get back in and do some, on like some of the major streets, some of the overlay uh, from the uh, state funds. Then, but um, so we don't know exactly how much we would ask at this point to pull out, but we would like to come back and say, could we have some reserves, maybe? So. That's kind of what we're looking at this year. Uh, of course, with the rain, we've had a few things that have fell in, and you never know what's coming up. But nothing serious. You know, we've patched up a few holes. Nothing uh, as far as a disaster at this point. I just have a couple questions. So, it just I just want to make sure that I understand what you're saying. You're saying that you've got a surplus of. Nine hundred thousand dollars, correct? Yes, approximately. Sure. That's what you're anticipating for the year, or you actually have it now? I have that now. You have that now, okay. And then this list that you gave us, you've got an estimate on here of three hundred and around three hundred and forty, as to what each of these things are going to cost. And on this list, which items have already been completed? Uh, and like I said, you know, some of these would be covered by the, the existing budget. <coughs> uh, of course, uh, the, the Flint Street job that we came in and finished the last section of that this year, uh, the basic of all of it was done except along the parking meters and the, and the traffic. And that was done, and then the Mountain Street project was done. Uh, we've done some of uh, the Bearwell Lindsay job we just finished up, uh, drainage improvements there. Uh, 
Okay, so you've got you've got Flint Street. You said is complete. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then Mountain Street drainage improvements. That's, that's complete. Cool. Yes. And what was the other one? Uh, we have uh, <laughs> we have finished the uh, Bear Valency job. That was a small job there, but it was it was needed. Which one is that? Uh, Bear oh, drainage, drainage improvements, uh, Berryville Lindsay. Okay. And and we're coming this concrete street work. Is, we're in process. We're so we Pendergrass Corner is complete. Uh, we still have to come back and and there's a part of the sidewalk there is is failing under and uh, you know there's a void underneath. Um, but uh, you know it's a private sidewalk, but there's a, you know the water meters there, so that portion of it is our li liability. So we've still got to come back on that. Uh, you know, we finished some concrete work at the intersection of Sprang and Main. We just we just poured uh, uh, by the trolley depot of South Main. Right today, we're working uh, on the loop to finish some some projects up there. So. Okay, so you would say those four things that you just um, mentioned are complete, and yes. the rest of the things are either in progress or will be. You're going to try to get to them this year, correct? Yes, that's that's the hope. If we could get enough, save enough money, and and, and then to justify enough to come out of the, the reserves, and if if we can't, some of those we might have to. Pay okay, so off. so you're saying the 338, 340 is not sufficient for what you need to do after further uh, evaluation, or? No, I'm, I'm saying that is correct, but the but this this amount will not fit in the budget of the 600,000 that I turned in for 2019, uh, because. You know, I'm, I can only look at probably you know 200,000 for street maintenance as I come into every year. Okay, so this is your wish list, and this is what you're thinking it's going to cost. This yeah. is not what you're actually. You'd love to get it done, but this is the cost associated with that. Okay, got right, it. Yeah. Yes, and and, okay. and some of this may be more, and of course we always try to keep it below that if we can. You know. Uh, okay, but your real your real cost or the, your real budget is around 200 and. Would you say 220, 230? Yeah, the, the you know the full budget was like 620 or whatever. But you're talking so a third. third of that back to maintenance because you've got to look at the okay. other uh, things you're pulling out of that money. Okay. All right. And of course we 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 don't ever budget for over ex, uh, you know expected revenues. Right. Okay. Uh, so a lot of this will come back at uh, mid-year budget review okay. also. So we, we we might have got a little aggressive, but a lot of I mean all of this needs done. Of course, we could we could add some more to that, but uh, uh, but I think utilizing that, which now we've used we 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 utilize that at the school in front of the the school, and it's kind of hard to tell it's that it's not actual payment. I mean, it's we won't get quite the the mileage out of it, but but but. Overall, even if you come back and did it twice, you still, you know, double up. You can still. It seems like you come ahead. I think it's a, uh, it's a great way to go with our budget. I mean, it would be, it would be great if we could just, you know, go in and put two and a half inches all over town, but we obviously can't do that. So, uh, but that's the main thing. Every year we got to try to seal and keep the water out of what we can, and keep the water from, you know, uh, taking it off. So, it's a. You know, it's, it's it's every year. Of course, it changes with the weather and, and what we have to do. But uh, uh, hopefully, that's what we hope we can keep that in and come back and still still keep enough reserve and still get this done. Ms. Snyder. So basically, what you're saying is rather than a wish list, it's more like avoiding future catastrophes. Well, I mean, it's just some of this. If you don't, if you if you don't address it, then it, you could get to the point. Like we've got some streets that are the point now that we can't really overlay them unless it, it almost needs to be tore out and, and, and start but from scratch. But that doesn't taking something bad and repairing rather than worse. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you got to try to Which stay ahead of it. Cost and, a zillion more. Yeah, and we of course we've had some hits over the years, but but that's that's took us about a decade to, to build that up that, that nine hundred thousand back and forth here and there so okay. uh, but we don't want to we want to we don't want to spend it all obviously Mr. Uh, you got some uh, I noticed you're addressing some stormwater problems drainage uh, I know that Berryville is a is still pretty bad 
spot there every time we get a storm where there's gravel all the way across, all the way down to the curb. Uh, is there any plan to do something about that? Well, that's what we're, we're, we're bringing out the, as much asphalt as we can on the street, and then we're going to kind of burn to try to catch it. The, the only fix, really, to, to totally solve that would be go back on private land almost to... Uh, they graded that out several years ago, and, and, and that really shouldn't have happened. You know, all that it's, it's gravel and put a playground set in there or whatever. And, and, uh, but the, the gentleman there had unfortunately passed away, and we talked to the, to the owners in that area. They're not, they don't really care if we come out a little farther. So that's what we're kind of doing then, trying to, you know, to, to make sure we get the water on down on the corner on Lindsay, bring it on down, and it comes across to Flint. But that's what we're trying to do is catch that as much as we can and keep it off the street because, like you say, every time it, it rains, we have to run a sweeper up there and, and, and clean it, and uh, it's, a, it's a problem. The barrel itself, we've put some asphalt just kind of in the front, but a lot of this is coming in, you know, off the side there, so. Yeah, I know. Uh, it kind of looks like maybe there needs to be uh, some culverts diverting the water instead of just making it go on downhill because... Well, it's, you know... That's a possibility of, of, of getting it and tying into to uh, down on Lindsay. This is where it all comes down. We've got one across. Uh, the culvert they put on Lindsay's it doesn't catch as much as you know the way it was designed. Right. It's kind of it's kind of. But we've tried to clean that out and make it as, as efficient as possible. But you know, at some point, it's probably going to take some more money than what I, I have on there. You're correct. Uh, but we we can improve it. And. Uh, on up Steel Street, the sidewalk up Steel Street, uh, I learned that there had been a plan to put a rail along there, and because uh, people are almost afraid to walk down that and fall off, and, uh, could we possibly squeeze that back into the budget? Well, that one, I, I they said, you know, some of the sidewalks are put in, and then we take them in and keep them in. But a lot of those, they go back to the, the property owners, you know. So, I mean, we, we, you're talking on Steel Street. I think part of that would have to be, you have to look at that, because I think the, the city doesn't own that entirely anymore. So, so we only go from curb to curb. We don't own the sidewalks. All right. So, so then we're putting... Then so we're the improving. people that own those empty lots along there are right. responsible for. Correct. So, so otherwise, we're we're improving people's private we property. Nail them? We're improving people's <laughs> private property. <laughs> yeah. Well, probably like you say, with that with that amount of height, there it, it should have you know been engineered with with rails on there. Uh, but you know, and then say some of that we put in and say it's along a state highway, then we have to maintain as far as there was any money I came see. back to it, or if. Of course, some property or our property is there, but yeah, we get into uh, you know how far back do you want to to try to to go and enforce code and and uh, I mean that's an ongoing issue with uh, sidewalks right now is is you know how much you enforce to get private. People. That's the only sidewalk that side of town. So yeah, yeah, and. and there was there was part of it that came around Flint. We've had some more some walls that fell, and then and then some of the drainage in the case it comes in. Sometimes if it's our drainage, we can kind of help. So we we helped with some of that sidewalk up there, but you know some some of it we just can't do legally. Any other questions? Well, I just have one thing. Other thing, um, uh, some of the neighbors up there would like to see something like Jacob's Ladder going down Berryville Avenue, so that they can walk downtown. It, it would it'd be good because that's so steep there, and you got the gravel. It is dangerous. I mean, we we did some work on Jacob's Ladder, and with some of the railing, had to repair that this uh, last fall. Yeah, that's that's real nice. If we, if we had something like that going up Berryville. That's something maybe you know, if a grand opportunity was to come there, you know, some of these sidewalks that we've had that has been put in, and, and, and Glenn has helped us with some of those. That, that's, that's been some grant money where we could do it. Sometimes. There is some grant money for that, trails or sidewalks, and, uh, and, mm -hmm. and you know, you get back to water and wastewater is usually nothing. But that's something we could look at if if we could we could fund it, and, and if 
you know, we could we could do it pricey, but it'd, it'd be nice if we had a grant to do that. Yeah. Because then you'd be pulling back from from that two hundred thousand per year that we discussed. Yeah. And one more thing, what do we do to change the speed limit on East Mountain and Eccles? Well, that's that's Police. that's that's up to council. I mean, of course, you know, the, you probably want to, the, usually PD on, on the signage. You know, PD we back or they go with us. We kind of bounce it forth, but as far as setting that, that's that's council sets that. Uh, okay. We don't do that. Thanks. Anybody else? Mr. Snyder. So, does Public Works need us to make a motion type thing to do this? No. Okay. Not it, at this it, point. Don't, they don't. Well, that's what I mean. No. Okay. No, it's just a few this is just an update. So, uh, I forgot who it was that uh, wanted to talk about uh, Mr. Meyer and, and Ms. Green wanted to talk about the streets. So. Well, they want to take this special money out. Don't they need our approval? Not at this point in time. We're not we're not asking for any extra money at this point. At, oh. Okay. Um, probably the mid-year budget will know exactly more oh. closer what we're at. Okay. So. We'll be back. Yeah. Good. <laughs> Make sure you fix your foliage in the meantime. <laughs> All right. Nothing else? I'm tired of swimming. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. Thank, Thank you very you. much, Dwayne. Appreciate it. Um, all right. That gets us up to uh, update on North Street property. Motion to discuss. Motion to discuss. Second. All right. Uh, I talked to the appraiser uh, today, and I am I haven't gotten it yet, but he was working on the final verbiage on it. It's, it gets pretty complicated because it's, he's appraising it as a residence. We have the appraisal on the business commercial side. Um, and so I'm talking with him. Uh, you know, again, I was supposed to have it all week, and he assured me today I'd get it. So I'm going to have to forward this on to you later on. Uh, but also along that same note, uh, I've gotten in contact, too, with uh, the administrator of Mercy Hospital in Berryville, who might be interested in leasing that from us if we don't want to sell it. So that's a, something to keep in the back of your minds. So they're going to be getting back in touch with me. Yes, ma'am. Just a real quick question. Um, at what point or um, I know we've talked about the property being sold or not being sold. Now you've mentioned this thing about Mercy Hospital. Is like how do we go about just saying we'd like for it to be listed? And put up we sale. can't. We can't list it. We have to put it up for auction. We have to put it up for auction. We want. I want to get the appraisers for appraisals uh, for the council to be able to have every all the information available to you before we did that. If this is what the council wants to do. Okay. And then the mercy thing. You're going to have an update. How soon do you think you'll have that? I think I'll, I'll know that by the next meeting. Okay. All right. Yep. So anyway, any other questions? Okay. Uh, I come up with uh, Mr. Thomas and uh, discussion of the master recent update, recent, most recent master plan. Motion to discuss. Motion to discuss. Second. All right. <laughs> Mr. Thomas. Yeah, I'd like to pass something down and be sure that uh, Mr. Buford and the two reporters get a copy, please. I'm going to be making a motion. It's kind of complicated. start out with saying the vision plan for Eureka Springs and I think uh, I hope everybody has a copy of the vision plan prepared by the UALR Donahue project and adopted by the City Council on November 12 1997 will soon be celebrating its 22nd birthday the vision plan calls for an ongoing planning process to periodically review the city's progress toward its vision 
the best of my knowledge, there has never been any such annual report to the City Council on progress made. This failure to report is unfortunate for two reasons. Without review and without public reporting, citizens, rightly or wrongly, are led to believe that the vision plan, rather than providing a working guide for the city's development, was simply left to gather dust on some bookshelf somewhere. And it would be inappropriate to consider either revising or replacing the vision plan without first having assessed its usage and impact on the community. At this point, it would not be appropriate to ask the Planning Commission, with its only four members, to undertake an assessment and to prepare a report on the progress made under the vision plan over the past 22 years. In order to produce such a report on the vision plan as expeditiously as possible, I suggest the following four-part motion, unless uh, the chairman or the attorney tells me I should be making four motions. Anyway, at this point, I move for the council to request that the Planning Commission look over the 16 proposals and policies in the vision plan and then assign each of the four members of the Planning Commission and each of the six council persons the responsibility to research and report on one of those 16 items. Request that the Planning Commission consider options or persons to review and report on the remaining six items. Request that the Planning Commission set up a joint workshop for council and planning where the 10 individual reports and possibly the remaining six could be presented, discussed, edited, and merged into one update on the vision plan report. I request that planning accomplish these tasks within a reasonable time frame, but as quickly as possible. That's a motion if anybody wants to second oh, it. Second. <laughs> motion and second. Discussion? lot to digest. Mr. Weaver? First portion of your uh, motion, having the Planning Commission assigned, is improper. Planning Commission cannot direct City Council members to do anything. Well, uh, we could, uh, uh, assume the City Council member could opt out, but, you know, I, what word would you use? Certainly wouldn't put it to assign based on the Planning Commission. Okay, how about Request? Ask, yeah, ask Potentially. Mm -hmm. How about, okay. And then request each of the four members of the Planning Commission and each of the six council persons to research and report on one of these 16 items. So you want the word request instead of assign? Mm-hmm. Ms. Harmon? I just have a really quick question. I mean, this, I'm not saying that the vision plan isn't important. I'm just, I don't know why we're doing, I, I guess I have a different idea as far as doing, I mean, this seems like a lot of, this seems like a lot of uh, motion, it seems like there's quite a few motions here to accomplish what, and in, in my, my feeling is you're, what you're trying to do is you're trying to accomplish the, uh, the, or get an update on the vision plan as it stands now, at least on this particular version. Mm -hmm. So, um, to, to make it easy, wouldn't, in my opinion, I would say that we would make we would make a request to the planning commission to review the vision plan and see what has been done and what hasn't been done and then report back to City Council. Ms. Snyder? Well, <clears throat> the problem is, looking at the book and having been around when they did this, it's going to be awfully hard for four people to do it, which is why he's listing the four planning commissioners and the six councilmen. Um, requesting them to do it as opposed to maybe motioning is fine. But the ten of us need to work together on this. Um, this is way too much for four people. We and us older people, long timers, know a lot more about what's in here and what's going on, or what has or hasn't. But it needs to be split up among ten people rather than four. Ms. Harmon. 
I just have a question, and I actually have a question for Tom because I know Tom's on the planning commission. So can I can he come up to the mic just so I can ask a question sure. or a couple questions of him? Sorry, Tom. <laughs> See what happens when you come. <laughs> I think I remember when, just within the last six months, that the um, vision plan was on the agenda for the planning commission, if I remember correctly. And I think that was supposed to be on the on the agenda for 2019. Is that correct? Or, um, do you guys still have it on your as a to do? Uh, yeah, I think it was something to look at. Now, keep in mind, on the planning right now, we've got four people on it. Two have been on it less than six months. Right. Uh, so there's really nobody. There's not a lot of whole history on the planning commission right now, as far as you know what's what's happened in the last several years. I guess you could go back and take the vision plan and research and find out what's been done or hadn't been done. But there's not a lot of history on the planning commission right now. Okay, so if if you guys were to do, if you were to review what has been done, the majority of that would be done through the mayor's office, correct? As and and whoever else on staff that could update you as to what has been accomplished on here or at least interpret what you think this vision plan had originally intended? I, I assume so, yes. Uh -huh. I mean, because we would, we, that would basically be the same thing that we would be doing here um, is trying to interpret what it, what it as, is actually saying and what has been accomplished. But most of that information should be at City Hall, correct? So it wouldn't necessarily be that we need somebody who has been somebody to coordinate on the information or has been on council for years. It's just a matter of trying to figure out what things have been done. I mean, to me, it seems like it should be done through through the mayor's office, and, and you wouldn't necessarily have to have lived here for a long time or been on a commission for a long time to be able to. And I, maybe I'm completely wrong, but uh, I mean. What, you were on the planning commission now. I was on the planning commission, and, and that would be my first step, would be to go to City Hall and to ask those questions once I've deciphered what, what the main points were mm -hmm. out of this particular vision plan. Yeah, 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 I don't think planning has any problem trying to coordinate, you know, just with this, whoever is proper in the city to talk to about that. Okay. Uh, report back to the city council. Mr. Thomas? Well, planning, is, I might have a question for you, I don't know. You know, planning has only been there for three or four years, the longest person maybe. All of us here have only been here for maybe sitting five years, six years. We're talking about an annual report that has not been done for 22 years. That was the responsibility of the planning commission. I'm not faulting this planning commission because they haven't been around for 22 years. So this is a wonderful opportunity to put the responsibility for it with planning where it belongs, but also to provide some assistance for them and to provide a project where we can all work together cooperatively, and I think council and planning can really benefit from that. I agree. Further discussion? Can I, can I add sure. anything? Okay. Um, and I don't have a problem with that as far as everybody being involved. I just think initially, I think it, it, it should be placed in planning support and allow them to, to um, put together the information um, and then find out as much information as, as they should. Because this is, because you're right, this is, the, this is a responsibility of planning. But I think that's where it should start. And then maybe we can be involved on maybe the second, the, the, the last 50% of it, as opposed to all of these, all of these steps. Just my opinion. Mm -hmm. Ms. Schneider? I think either Terry, the mayor, or me should contact Beverly Blankenship. Um, she has the most incredible research abilities and was the chair of planning. And while she was the chair, she did incredibly awesome with this stuff. I'm sorry, contact Beverly and do what? Beverly Blankenship. Mm -hmm. See what she knows or if she would 
like to she wasn't look on into the it or she wasn't on the planning or the council when that was going on no not no that was before all of our times but what I'm saying is she's an incredible researcher and she has looked into this mm -hmm. when she was chair see if she has any background knowledge if she'd be interested in continuing looking into it she was phenomenal <laughs> on that we may have argued about a lot of other stuff but she was phenomenal on this stuff Mr. Thomas? I think that I hear you say that if, if it was assigned to planning alone, you would have basically two people with some real knowledge of the city. Well, no, I'm just saying that planning yeah. right now has four people and two have not been on exactly. very long. But I mean, we'd be, I don't, you know, plan would be happy to work with the city and try to research right. you know, what we can. Yeah. Okay. And so somebody's going to have to, you know, and I know you can, you could say mayor get all this information for me, but I don't think the mayor would want to do it. Somebody's going to have to go to parks. Somebody would have to go to transit. Somebody would have to go to public works. You know, somebody would have to go here, there, and there. And I don't, I'm, I just think it's a great opportunity for us all to work on a common goal and common project. Any other comments? All right, well, we got a motion and a second. Uh, there's no further comments. Um, I'm sorry, what, what was the motion? I think the motion is, uh, I moved as he wrote, wrote it down. So these four, four, four so all of these, yep. okay. It's my yep. understanding. Is that correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? I'm opposed. 3-1 fails. Um, do we, should we, can we postpone till when we have a full quorum? Well, I mean a full seating? I think. Uh, We're not I used think to this. If Ms., I think what I'm hearing, and if Mr. Thomas, and what I'm hearing from Ms. Uh, Harmon, is that the Planning Commission, if we can direct them, I think what Mr. Thomas is wanting is a report. Uh, and I think we can ask the Planning Commission to come up with a report and see where we're at. Uh, may not be completely satisfied to all these requests, but I think that's the beginning of where we are and what we can do on that. And offer uh, to help them. And I think we got to be careful not to be able to keep our, the legislative body, the, the City Council is a legislative body, the Planning Commission is a planning body, and be careful not to micromanage what the Planning Commission's doing. You're looking at me funny, but I'm not. I'm not pointing this out at you. I'm just saying yeah. that we need to be careful. Well, you're you're making. Con are we discussing again? No. I'm, the motion's been closed. I was referring to. Yeah, because we're not used to only having four. Her. So I was asking if we could redo. Okay, Miss Harm. I'm sorry. Do in order for us to send this back to planning, do we need to make a motion? You can make a motion. Okay, I make a motion that we send this to planning for, um, that we send it to planning um, for them to come up with a um, review, an initial review as to the vision plan from 1996 and where we stand on things that have either not been completed or have been completed that were within that vision plan. Does that make sense? That's me. Do I have a second? I'll second that. Okay, discussion. Mr. Thomas? Yeah, I would like to amend that to say uh, and report to council no later than the second meeting in June. That's only a month. Well, that's, that's oh, is that a month? No yeah, later than the second meeting in July. Can I amend that? Uh, there hadn't been a second on oh, that one. A second. That's right. Okay. All right, Mickey, you want to? Can we just request planning to look into this in a very timely fashion? That's, that's more or less the motion. Well, if we request them to work with us on going through this whole book. The motion is to report back to us, to look through this and report back to us. There wasn't a time limit put on it. Mr. Thomas wouldn't. Yeah, and what I'm saying is can't we just ask them to work with us on going through this book? I, 
the, the planning commission is going to go through that and come back and report back to us, and at that point we can decide what we want to do. I know. We're There's a motion this on here. Reporting back stuff just isn't cutting it right. Okay, well, we have a motion in a second. Is there any further discussion on that? Okay, all those in favor of, of uh, would you like to repeat your motion? I'm sorry. Um, so the motion is to send this to planning. planning for them to review the 1996 vision plan for the city of Eureka Springs and to report back to city council as to what items have been completed or are still in need <coughs> of being completed as to how the vision plan was was written. All right. And the motion and second. Mr. Thomas. Are we still discussing? Or? Yes. I would appreciate somebody explaining to me the difference between her motion not being micromanaging versus my motion being micromanaging. She's, She's letting the planning commission make the make the decision coming back. Your motion has the city council being involved. At planning's direction. Or so, request, yeah. All right. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor, saying aye. 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 All right. Four of them. So moved. All right. That brings us up to our previously proposed animal law changes. Oh, make a motion to discuss. The animal law changes. <laughs> we could get a second. <coughs> I got a got a motion to discuss. Did I hear a second? Oh, second. <laughs> All right, uh, Miss Snyder. Um, Mr. Attorney, how did we leave the changes we came up with? Wasn't it? Just until we finished any additional changes, we had um, just the 100 foot thingy. We had the, um, the little piggy thingy, the mini pigs. Uh, and I, th I thought we had all these worded things. I thought that was just ready to go. We were going to wait to see if we're adding any more because Melissa was bringing up the temperature weather thing, which ended up not being put on there. It's my understanding, uh, and the record, of course, is, is the record, uh, that we were going to, yes, wait till we had a better picture of what uh, Ms. Green might want to add or what other council members might want to add. And we went ahead and finished the uh, animals in the vehicle uh, a little quicker maybe than the rest of council is wanting for the other stuff because of the time of year. So I think it is and now appropriate unless council is going to consider other animal ordinances to go ahead and prepare uh, documents for the council to look at regarding the pigs and minimum uh, areas and those other issues but the pressing nature of the rising temperatures is the reason that the other one was completed first okay what documents are you talking about that we need we already had habitat and we already need the ordinance itself I thought this was that's not an ordinance I don't believe so a list of what was okay this was the proper wording this was the change of wording that was going to be used yes. so do we just need to take this and say please put it in proper ordinance form and submit it's my, it it's my understanding you've already done that well that's what I thought so is it a matter of giving it a number and reading it no it, it needs the proper wording now and it should have that happen in the next meeting or so so no, if we, we tell that. you go ahead and give us the proper wording for the next meeting, that's all it needs? It's in the works of having that happen. Well, that's what I thought like six months You're ago. You're in the process of doing that. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what do we have to do to finally get the first reading on it? We don't have to do anything. Mr. Weaver has to do. So do we have to say, uh, Mr. Weaver, would you please bring this next meeting? 
you should have it by the next meeting or the following meeting one, depending on how many ordinances it actually breaks down to. It'll break down to at least two, and it may break down. Well, I was going to say, this one was the original rewording thing, and then Melissa had said temperatures, and we went a different way with that, and now she's doing the yeah. dogs in a car, and that's separate, so this so thing can go. Unless the council at this point wants to defer it to consider other issues, which I don't know of any that you do. Yeah, I, I so think we've pretty much covered it, everything. I believe at this time you're, you're ready to have ordinances prepared for at least the two issues that are on that list. Okay, so would you please bring it next meeting? Thank you. <laughs> anything else from anybody? Ms. Harmon? Um, a hundred foot thingy in the piggies. That's what I have. Is there any way for us to get our hands on that prior to the meeting, yeah, like a day or two before the meeting? Okay, you have so a that, copy. So that we can read what you've put together? Do we get to see that before? The ordinance itself? Before our envelope is set here on the table, just so we can actually read it? If I get a chance to prepare it that soon, as I said, it may be, a, it may be two meetings before you get to vote on it but okay. most likely it will be ready before next week. Okay. If it's okay. not, if we don't have it, we can always defer it until the next meeting. We so don't have to read it and act on it immediately after he proposes it. Okay, now, we, I just we want to be able to read, see what's sure. there and yeah. what's being proposed yeah. and, and prepare sufficiently for that. Okay. The decision was made to get the part out that you read tonight and last meeting because of the rising temperatures. I understand that one. Okay, I'm just asking it, about the others. This will come out in the normal order now that we have no more issues okay. being debated. Okay. Any further discussion? All right. That brings us up to our next item, a discussion of appointing somebody to read the letters. Ms. Snyder, Ms. Harmon. Motion to read. I mean to discuss. Second. All right. Ms. Snyder. Um... Susan, do you have something you want to throw in there about that? I mean, it I, it still stands. I mean, I know that we, I know that the city council, as a um, as a voting entity, said they don't want to read letters anymore. I'm willing to read letters. I don't know if if anybody is willing to reconsider that. I think it is. I think it is. I mean, I just feel deep deeply that it is a thing that the you know, if, if I'm in the hospital and there's an issue that maybe um, I, perhaps it affects me directly, I would like to be able to send a letter in. And I would like that to be a part of the minutes of that particular meeting. Therefore, um, I know Ann had sent something that said, you know, if we're just attaching it or saying it should be attached to the meeting, it's not officially a part of the meeting, if I understand that right, right Ann? If it's not part of the meeting, it does not get attached. However, the motion was not, the motion was only regarding council members reading letters. It was not about letters being read. read. Okay, so I guess what I'm saying is if I have no one to come in during public comments and read my letter, I, was, I'm, I would still want it to be part of those minutes and therefore in that cir circumstance I may need a city council member to read that letter and my thought is that I think we should still um, provide that right to the citizens of Eureka Springs in those circumstances. Um, you know, someone may be in the hospital, somebody may, may be out of town, and it may be an important issue down the road <coughs> that would require, not require, that would be a courtesy of the city council um, to provide to a citizen. Mr. Thomas? I believe that you're asking council to reconsider its vote from two weeks ago and I'm not sure how you voted when we voted last time. Did you vote for it or against it? 
I vote. I voted against it. Then you 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 cannot ask for it to be reconsidered. Only someone who voted for it can ask We're for it to be reconsidered. We're not asking. She specifically said recon she wanted us to reconsider. She said she would like to. She didn't yeah, make that right. deal. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Miss Snyder. Okay. We cannot make a law naming Miss Harmon and I to read letters, but both of us are willing to do it. So I would just like to make it a statement, a request, I'm not sure which terminology to use, that if for whatever reason letters come to us and the person cannot come or cannot have someone read it, that either one of us will read it. We are volunteering to do this. So how do we word that, Mr. City Attorney? I think, again, it goes back to what Mr. Thomas was saying. No, we're we're not, no I said we're not making a law. We can't make a law. Susan and I are on there right now. We might not be on here next month. So all we can say is we're volunteering. So I'm asking the City Attorney how we can state that we are volunteering to be available for letter reading. I think what you just said is as close as you're going to get. You're not going to pass an ordinance or a resolution. Yeah, well, no, we don't want. Requires to. that because of Mr. Thomas is right. Well, no, we don't want to anyway. Because, like I said, in a month we might not be here. Well. So I guess what we're doing then is we're stating right now someone has a letter that for some reason they can't read. Susan and I are here to do it. Does that work? We're just making a statement? At that point, it will be up to the other council members if they want to uh, call for a... They voted order. against reading. They didn't vote on any letters by anybody. They said, no, they were not going to read. So fine, they don't get to read. Susan and I voted against it, so we can read. You cannot violate the majority rule. No, we're not. The majority doesn't want to read, so they won't. They can call for a point of order, and then it'll be up to a vote of the council. <laughs> well, if they want to sit there and mess around with other people like that, I guess that's their business. Because they could just sit there quietly the and just the read the stupid the letters. The motion was the council can I read the letters. We're not council. We're people volunteering. That they got nothing to do with it. <laughs> so, all right. It's ridiculous. I've got a question. Mr. Yes, sir. If... Uh, if a citizen writes a letter to their member of the council and asks them to read it at the city council meeting, or if a council person gets gets a letter and decides to read it at a meeting, I, does that violate our... If it's restricted to the three minutes that anybody else is on? The way your motion was made and the way I understand it, the request to have it read would be the violation if you agreed. Not the decision of a council member as part of their own discussion to use portions or all of a letter in their discussion. Okay, thank you. So what you're saying, Tim, is that we can sit there and actually read the letter without saying we're reading a letter? No, Mr. Harmon. Okay, so just a quick, just a quick question. So for um, Tim, if, if I did receive a letter and I felt that it needed to be read um, as a courtesy to that particular citizen. Um, could I just read it during public comments? If Can I physically be a part of public comments? If you read it during public comments as their letter, you would be in violation of the way okay. it was passed. Okay. No. That's not right. If we go up there as a person, not as a councilman, Are we I have done that. I have gone to the microphone as a resident and during the three-minute public comment. And Butch, you were there when I did it. Terry was there. Tim was there. And that was perfectly fine. So if I go up to the mic and I read this letter, whether I state it's somebody else's or not, if I'm up there as a resident, that is legal. Mr. Meyer, if I get a letter from a constituent, I can ask to add it to the agenda and read the letter. That you can do. There you but go. not as public comment. And would you let us do it that week, Tom? No. I wouldn't stop you from Bye. doing anything, Michelle. <laughs>
<laughs> no, you're the one who, you're the one right. who did that thing. We can't any, add any last any, minute any, stuff. Any, any further discussion? <laughs> All right. Uh, all right. Discussion of Uber and Lyft in Eureka Springs. Although Mr. McClung made the motion, he's not here. Mr. Thomas, do you have any idea what this is about? Uh, I think that he, Mr. Uh, McClung, wanted uh, the city attorney to talk to us about the uh, legislature, state legislature, ruling on Uber and Lyft. Okay. In a motion to discuss. Motion, motion to discuss. Second. Second. All right. As far as I understand the current standing of the law, keep your paws off. Council has no authority over Uber or Lyft. It's all at the state level. Ms. Harmon? But they are able to be here in Eureka Springs as Uber or Lyft, correct? Yes, but they are under the commission that governs through the state, not under a local law. They'd have to have business license. They other, do. Other than Joe. And that's for any individual who decides they want to be a part of that organization or those organizations. They have to have a business license. Okay, gotcha. But all, all regulation as to who can drive, how they drive, where they drive, that is all state, state regulated. Okay. okay. Mr. Snyder? So that means all of the laws that we pass for the safety of our people and visitors riding in taxis and limos and what have you, all of that's just down the tubes now because of Uber and stuff? No, you still have some regulation over taxis. You do but not why have would regulation. we have taxis if Uber can come in? No. That is an issue that you probably need to take up with your state legislature. Yeah, like that's going to fly. Because <laughs> they made the determination that Uber and Lyft and its other entities that are smaller are all not taxi services and they're not, they're by subject to local regulation. They are only subject to state law. So our safety concerns doesn't matter. That's where you have to address your Jeez. next level of representation. Yeah. All right, any further comments? All right, brings us down to agenda setting. Bob, do you have anything? No. Anybody? Uh, yes, sir. Mr. Meyer? I'm not going to be here the yeah. 26th. I've got I think that's one of the items we need to bring up. It's our next meeting. It's Memorial Day. Mm. No, it's not. But uh, I would like to add to the agenda, which whenever we'll have our next meeting, I'd like to add the speed limits on Eccles and uh, East Mountain Drive and add the subject of adding cord limits. Speed limits, speed on, limits on Eccles? On Eccles Echoes and, and East, East Mountain. Mountain. And the second one is Excuse adding... Me. We need a second for your... Oh. I'll second that. And adding uh, Corley to the street system. And I'll second that one. All right. Anybody else? Um, our next meeting is technically on Memorial Day. It is not technically. It is on Memorial Day. Well, um, the options we have is to cancel that meeting. Uh, it looks like those two items are the only thing I know right now on the agenda, so we could wait until the first meeting in June to take those up. Works for me. If that's okay with everybody. All right. Do you have another item for agenda? Yep. Let's take a vote. I want to make a vote. Uh, huh? Can I make a motion to sure. do that? Sure. Yep. Okay. Um, I make a motion to cancel our budget meeting and our city council meeting on, is it the 27th? May? 26th. Yep. 27th. 27th or 26th? 27th. 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 Yep. Of 2019. Okay. Second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, so moved. Technically, you're changing your rules. They probably should individually vote. Oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> All right, what? call a 
Yeah, change our rules so we got to have a roll call vote. Oh. Mr. Mayor? Yes. Mr. Thomas? Yes. Ms. Snyder? Yes. Ms. Harmon? Yes. Okay. Well, did that include going on the 10th? I didn't hear that part. Uh, just skipping the. Skipping oh, just skipping. Okay. Council comments, Mr. Thomas? I'm always first. Well, I can go down this further. I mean, I'm sorry. That's I just, okay. Yeah. I don't mind. Uh, I'll, let me do it this okay. way, okay? <laughs> okay. Mr. Meyer? <laughs> no more comments. All right, Ms. Harmon? No. Ms. Snyder? <laughs> Why did you start with you? <laughs> okay. Yeah, I've got a whole list. First of all, Happy Mother's Day, everyone. I want you to know it's a really nifty coffee cup that my Marine son got me. It says, I'm a great mom. I'm very special, very beautiful. I'm the best. All other moms are disasters. Everyone agrees, believe me. It's got a picture of rum. That's for my Marine. Yes, a little bit ago. So, happy birthday to him coming up. Happy birthday to my oldest son, Tracy, who three days later, and is this town ready for this? He delivered his son on the bedroom floor, and is such a good boy scout, he used the, the shoelaces from his sneakers to tie the umbilical cord. <laughs> oh, yes. So, Tracy, who was raised here, now he has a new son, Ian Michael Trace Clark. Good grief. The name is bigger than the little baby. But the real kicker was his wife took pictures of him delivering, so I have some really great pictures on my phone. Yeah, kids nowadays. Okay, Memorial Weekend. Quit snickering. Memorial Weekend at the cemetery on Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. They will have a, a table and I think snacks, but I'm not going to swear to that, in regards to selling cemetery plots when you're out there visiting your loved ones and stuff and snacks and all this kind of thing. Uh, apparently this is done every year and it's really huge. So yes, please do come by and visit us. Um, we still take volunteers to help clean headstones and stuff. So we've got that going on. Um, let's see. Oh, and just a warning. Yes, cedar pollen is excessively bad this year, which is why I have this, not a sunburn, that cedar allergy, so be careful out there. That's it. All right, Mr. Thomas. My grandma has a bunion. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, these kids were born and raised here. Besides that, <laughs> I like to go <laughs> Go back just just briefly talk about the uh, the vision plan again because I really fought councils for 22 years and planning commissions for 22 years for not doing their, either one of them doing their job uh, and and I just don't see the logic of someone saying I want you to do 22 years of catch up versus I want you to do 22 years of catch up and I'll help you if you ask me to. One of those being micromanaging and the other one not being micromanaging. I don't see the difference between those two. And the other thing I'd like to say is if, if the chairman is going to discuss after a vote, I think that he should allow everyone at the table to discuss after the vote. Anything else? That's it. Thank you. All right. Um, Events coming up on the 17th of May, we have Antiquities at 7 p.m. here in the auditorium. Uh, it's a movie that was actually filmed partially in Eureka Springs, and, and so it's going to be shown here in the odd, and it's going to be free for everybody who, to show up, and that's on the 17th. And that is going to be the same evening as the White Street Walk uh, from 4 to 10 up on White Street, which is our annual get-together up there. And so that's always a great, uh, great event. Uh, the 18th through the 19th, as we heard from our parks director, is the Enduro Bike Race. Uh, it's going to be all over the area, all through our parks, Leatherwood, Passion Play, and, and in the town. And then on the 18th, we have Music in the Parks, uh, starting at 2.30 with Arthur Duncan. And then at 5.30 will be Grady Nichols. 
And also that evening, uh, down here in the Odd, we'll have We Dream Dawn uh, at 7 p.m. Uh, featuring the Elephant Revival and Jacob Fred Jazz Odyssey members. Uh, that's going to be $12 in advance and $15 at the door. And then the 19th is one of my favorite events up at the Crescent Hotel Gardens. It's a 14th annual Books in Bloom uh, with a, a lot of different authors from all over the country here uh, talking about their books and doing readings from their books. And on the 20th through the 21st, we'll have the Plein Air Festival uh, all around town. So you'll see artists and painters uh, with their easels set up all over town doing artwork. And then on the 23rd through the 26th, we'll have the Christian Motorcycle Association, Heart of the Ozarks Rally, and that's going to be all around town. And then on the 25th, the Drumming in the Park from 6 to 8. And then on the 27th, the courthouse will be closed in observance of Memorial Day. That's it. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor. Aye. If not, you stay here. Thank you.